All right, you guys, today we are going to be talking about the surface area of a rectangular prism. Now, keep in mind, in last year's curriculum, we dealt a lot with um, the nets. We uh, learned how we could expand um, or sort of unfold a um, 3D shape into its component 2D shapes, and we would add all of those up. And then we would get the surface area. This year, we're going to move on to where we actually have a formula to do that for us. Okay? So, first of all, when it comes to rectangular prisms, we're going to think of this as whatever side is on the bottom. Okay? So, this side we know is going to be the bottom. Okay? That is going to be your base area. Now, remember, in this particular case, we have this base. Okay? Um, when we're thinking about the lateral area, that's just going to be the sides, like here and in the back, those four sides. And then we have these two bases together, your lateral area and your base area is going to combine to form your um, total surface area. So let's look at a formula that's going to help us figure out our lateral area in this particular case. We're going to take the perimeter of our base. Okay, because remember this and this here at the top are going to be the same. So the lateral area uh, of a prism is going to be the, per the perimeter of the, the base times the height of the prism. So if we had dimensions that were assigned here, 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 and here, okay, and then multiply that by the height, that's going to give us. So let me back that up so I make sure that I'm clear. We're going to take the um, um, dimension here, here, here and here, add those up, the perimeter, okay, and multiply that by the height. Now we're going to see how the perimeter is going to work when we get to a cylinder, but that's going to be in a different video. It's going to be something that you already know. Let's look at the triangular prism. We can figure out the perimeter of this base because remember in a triangular prism, it's not going to be that side there, this side here, or the one that's facing us. It's going to be the one here at the top. And the one that mirrors it here at the bottom. It is the perimeter of the triangle multiplied by the height of the prism. Okay, now um, I had some questions when we were doing one of our standardized tests. How do we use this? Blah, blah, blah. Now, this formula here is going to be what we're going to use. This and this are the exact same thing. If you notice here, the lateral area is that or they also can call it L. So the total surface area of S of a prism is twice the area of a base plus the lateral area. So again, two times big B plus the perimeter of the base times the height is going to give us the total surface area. Okay, now it may be a little bit confusing at this moment, but we're going to put it into practice and to practice problems. So hang on for just a second. I'll switch that over. All right, now the first thing that we need to do is we need to orient ourselves with this particular prism. This is a triangular prism. So I need to first ask myself, where are the bases? Now, as I've said in previous videos, as um, I've said uh, before, last year when we were dealing with nets, typically speaking, your prism, the adjective before the word prism is going to tell you where your bases or what your bases are. So that's going to be sort of simple for us to try to orient ourselves. We have to sort of orient the prisms also in our mind where we can flip them up um, onto their base to see exactly where our height um, would be. So Kevin is painting a block in the shape of the triangular prism. What is the surface area of the block? So we have the adjective prior to prism, so we know that it's going to be a triangular prism or a triangular base. All right, so first things first, let's talk about our base shape. Our base is going to be a triangle. So in order to figure out the area of a triangle, okay, the area of a triangle, what do we do? What is the formula? We know that the formula is going to be one half times little b times little h. So again, this is our triangle. Am I going to consider five here? No, I'm not going to consider the hypotenuse of this uh, right triangle here or the right triangle here. That would not matter, okay? So if we think about this triangle as a whole, our base is going to be 8, and then the height of the triangle is going to be 3. Okay, so on the paper that I'm going to be writing with on our um, drawings page, I'm just going to go ahead and identify my dimensions. I know that the base is 8. In this case, we're dealing with inches, so that's 8 inches. The height is going to be 3 inches. 
Now, what else do I need to know in order to figure this out? So remember that formula was um, the surface area is equal to 2 big B, 2 times big B plus P times H. So that's the perimeter of the triangle. So at this point, how do I figure out the perimeter of the triangle? I know that this edge here is 5 inches. Okay, so I know that this is 8. What do I also know about this side? Because look at this side right here. That's 5. So I know that this is also 5. Okay, so if I want to think about the perimeter, okay, now I'm writing these things down on the other page. Now remember, the perimeter is always going to refer to not the any other side besides our base. So I have 5 plus 8 plus 5. So remember, 5 plus 8 plus 5. Okay? Now, what's the other item that I need to know? I need to know the height of the um, actual prism. So if I were to, in my mind, try to orient this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some magic with this, um, with this picture. All right, so I'm going to try to flip this over, okay? I'm going to flip it, okay? And I want to flip it so that we can see, and I think I flipped it one too many times. If we think about this sitting on this particular base, what is the height at this point? The height of the prism is actually going to be what dimension? It's going to be 6, okay? Because, again, if I were to flip this over, pull this side up, okay, the height of my prism is now going to be 6. Again, if I think about this also, this is a base, this is a base. So if this is sitting on some other surface, right side up, the height is going to be 6, so I know that it's going to be 6 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my drawings page. So here on my drawings page, I have all of the information that I need. Okay? So I know that for my base, it be 8 inches, 3 inches. The perimeter of the base, 5 plus 8 plus 5. Okay? And then I have the height of that prism is 6. So I'm going to just start plugging everything in here. So again, 2 times... Area of a triangle, 1 half times 8 times 3. Why am I putting everything over 1? Because it just works better when it's a fraction. Plus my perimeter, 5 plus 8 plus 5 times the um, height of the prism. So let's start simplifying. 2 times 1 times 8, 8, 8 times 3, 24. 2 times 1. 2 times 1, 2. Now, is there more than one way to solve this particular problem or to simplify this? Absolutely. I'm solving it this way because to me it makes more sense. If it makes more sense for you to keep these as whole numbers and multiply by one half, absolutely. Do whatever makes sense. The only key is, is that you have to do what is efficient, meaning that you do it fast, but you also do it quickly. I'm sorry. You do it fast, but you also do it correctly. That is efficiency. So 5 plus 8. 13. 13 plus 5 is 18. Multiplying that by 6. So when I simplify this out, this becomes 12. 24 over 2, 12. Okay, put that in parentheses. I'll keep that straight. 18 times 6 is going to give me, when I multiply that out, magic of YouTube, 108. So simplify 24 plus okay, 108 is going to give me 132. I'm going to bring my units back. Now, the surface area, okay? When I deal with area, I deal with what? I deal with inches squared, inches squared, okay? So that's how you figure that out. Now, could I have done, could I have done a uh, net? Absolutely, pulled out my two triangles, find the area for those two triangles, pull out those um, other three lateral faces, they're all rectangles, figure out all of those, Sure, I could have done that. There is a time and a place for that. Yes, and that time and place is seventh grade. Now that we have that concept down, we can just plug everything into a formula, get everything that we need. So, um, as you saw here, I'm looking at lateral area also. Now, remember in that formula, the alternate version said S is equal to 2B plus L, L being your lateral area. If the problem just asks for the lateral area, I have my what? I have the area of my bases, and I have the area of my lateral faces. So if it was asking for lateral area, lateral area would be what? 
108 square inches. Base area for both, 24 square inches together. This is my TSA or total surface area. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next example. So our next example um, on our drawings page, again, we're going to put down a formula. I'm going to leave space over here for me to do all of sort of like my scratch work, okay? All right, in this case, we are fortunate in that we have a verbal description and we have a picture that goes along with it. This is a very common situation. We've all received a gift. Hopefully, we've all wrapped a gift for somebody else as well. Now, I want you to look at the picture very, very carefully, first of all, because you could get very confused and get to the wrong answer and guarantee on a standardized test or some test that I might give you, I might throw in sort of a tricky one like this. What do we see? We see dimensions of one foot, eight inches, and six inches. Just like in Sesame Street, one of these things does not belong in terms of the units. Notice that one foot is different from the other two dimensions, which are in inches. So what is the first thing that I need to do or what I do in this particular picture? I'm going to change that one foot to what? Pause the video, think about it for a sec. I'm going to change the one foot to 12 inches. So please be aware that is something that you will have to do because guaranteed they're going to give you the version that has one as one of the dimensions. All right, so let's lay everything out. We want to think about our base area. Now, remember your base it, with a rectangular prism is going to be a little tricky. Will you get to this exact same total surface area if you use this as a base or this bottom part as a base okay absolutely you're going to get to the total surface area but for the purposes of this example they're going to use it in the orientation that they have it your base area sitting so for instance if this was sitting at a table this is going to be your base area so we're going to use that as our base area so for big b we know that base times height little b times little h will equal to be big b okay so in this case, I'm going to say we're going to assign this as our little b value. But remember, I'm changing that to 12 inches. H, in this case, I'm going to keep as 8 inches. So one more time, this edge and that edge will be multiplied to get the uh, area of that rectangular uh, big B base. Okay? Now, now, what I've done is I've taken the liberty of going ahead and filling this out. A bit okay so we already have everything set up we know that 2 times 12 times 8 which is 96 plus 40 times 6 is 240 so again 96 times 2 that's gonna give me 192 plus 240 when I add all of those things up it is going to give me 432 and I'm gonna bring back my unit which is inches being total surface area is going to be what? Inches squared, you are right. Now remember, from the earlier problem, we know that this is the ultimate version. 2B is going to give me my base area. 240 is going to give me my lateral area. So again, depending upon what is asked for in the problem, do they want the base area? Do they want the lateral area? Or do they want the total surface area? Okay? Now, that is pretty much it for this video. The next video will cover the uh, total surface area of a cylinder. As always, if you have any additional questions, please come to class prepared with those questions. Have that ready for a tutorial session or one of our check-ins. And again, you can just back up this video, maybe clarify a point that I made that you did not understand. And as always, I will see you guys soon.